Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the um, afternoon session uh, on TAVI. Um, just a small point for discussants. Could you please announce your full name, city, and country before speaking. Um, so we have an interesting session, uh, starting with a paper presented by Dr. Buzzati from our president's uh, unit, Professor Alfieri's unit in Milan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here with you and present this work regarding the role of CT computer tomography in the setting of transcatheter heart valve implantation. We know very well by now that residual heart regurgitation is a pretty frequent finding after TAVI. So the aim of this study is to evaluate the role of CT scan in the heart anatomy assessment and in particular into the prediction of residual heart regurgitation. We retrospectively analyzed 115 patients who underwent AVI from November 2007 to September 2010. And this is a baseline in characteristics. As you see, 63 patients received an EDWATS, while 52 received a COVAP. The two groups are pretty similar, but given the important differences between the two devices, we decided to analyze the sample overall and then divide it by the two subgroups. These are all the CT scan parameters that we assessed. We have the aortic analysis, of course, defined as the aortic rim at the level where the nadir of all the free cusps could be seen at the same time in the cell amplitude axial view. Then we have the length of the free edge of the cusps, the ascending aorta diameters and the ascending aorta angles, the distance of the coronary hostia from the aortic analysis, and the valve calcifications. Uh, one of the most important things to remember, of course, is that our only analysis is not round, but has a minimum and a maximum diameter, uh, but is very important to assess uh, in the process uh, um, decision making. We assess the analysis symmetry through the ratio between the maximum and the minimum diameter, and we define an important analysis symmetry for a ratio of values above 1.2, uh, which uh, were found in about one third of all our patients. There are many options for sizing a novel analysis. Of course, you could just take the mean diameter, or you can use the circumference, or you can use the average cusp length. This last is a particularly interesting method because we find that it is directly and precisely correlated to the mean diameter with a precise one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, so it, it, is, it could be a very useful tool in all the situations where you have doubts or inconsistencies, you, you know, some low image quality and uh, other situations. This is the early residual heart regurgitation in our sample. Um, 89 patients had some degree of aortic regurgitation, and 30% had a 2 plus or more than 2 plus aortic regurgitation. Actually, 31 patients had a 2 plus, and 3 patients had 3 plus. Um, searching for uh, res residual heart regurgitation and predictive factors, we couldn't find any significant association with any of the baseline characteristics like age, sex, ejection fractions, uh, type of the processes implanted, and so on. And we couldn't find any association, even one sub of the CT parameters, like analysis asymmetry, the valve calcifications, and the angles of ascending aorta. We did find a direct correlation instead for the analysis diameters, and an inverse and even stronger correlation with the processes analysis mismatch. The processes analysis mismatch uh, measures the incongruity between the processes uh, implanted and the size of the analysis. So that positive mismatch values correspond to a process's oversizing, while negative values uh, represent a process uh, downsizing. Mean mismatch values was 9% in our CIS, with a range that went from 31 to minus 13. And uh, interesting, we found a cutoff level of 7.4% under which uh, a significant residual heart regurgitation became much more frequent. No association were found uh, um, between the mismatch and the possible related mismatch complications, such as ventricular block or persistent embolization, although the numbers are small and um, no, definitive, no definitive conclusion can be taken. This is a direct comparison between the CT measurements uh, of Edwards and Kovab. Uh, 
as you can see, the COVA have a um, larger analysis and uh, uh, specifically uh, higher values of mismatch. This could be in part understandable because of the intrinsic larger size available for the COVA. Analyzing the two subgroups uh, uh, separately, we find for the Hidwitz uh, subgroup that all the associations seen in the old sample were confirmed and some became even stronger. In particular, this uh, that is the association with the process of analysis mismatch and the residual hard regurgitation. On the contrary, we couldn't find any association with the, the analyst mismatch and the residual hard regurgitation in the core valve group. Actually, in the core valve group, we couldn't find any significant association with any of the parameters that we studied. We think that uh, this is due to uh, one main problem that is also most, the most important limit of the study, probably, but it's the fact that the depth of implantation and the precision of implantation was not assessed. And this is likely to be an important factor of the COVAP. So in conclusion, we can say the larger analysts are definitely associated with residual hard regurgitation. And in case of a septic valve, early RAR is dependent from processes mismatch, so that an adequate process of assessing can reduce the residual hard regurgitation with no apparently added risk. On the contrary, in the case of cold valves, every residual hard regurgitation was not predictable uh, with any of the pre variables. And this is likely to be due to the implant position uh, errors and to the intrinsic conical shape uh, of the processes. <laughs>